Hey guys, welcome to my AFK money making guide. In this guide, I'm going to be showing you guys 10 different AFK money making methods that can make you anywhere from 3 mil up to 6 mil. I'll also be including the amount of time you can be AFK during the specific method, so do watch out for that on each method as well. I'm going to be providing timestamps to each of the methods as well, so you guys can jump back and forth to whichever method you would like to see. Anyway guys, I really hope you do enjoy and let's get into the video. So starting off with method number one, we have killing corrupted scorpions. You can make up to six mil per hour doing this, even more if you are on task and you can be AFK for around two to three minutes at a time. The requirements for this method are 88 Slayer and Ichthrin's Little Helper and you will also require some feathers of Ma'at as well. Um, recommended is 80 plus melee or mage. You can use either, either of these two combat styles. Um, preferably use one or the other and not range just because they are better with AoE damage. Um, also 95 prayer for curses, especially soul split will be really helpful. And 96 herb lore for the overloads. I also provided a recommended setup for this as well. So you can see that I am using Masterwork with the Cinderbane Gauntlets. And then I also am using my Noxious Scythe. You will want to use a two-handed weapon just so you do get to use most of those AoE abilities. And also having a Halberd type weapon with that kind of range will help as well. Um, as for my inventory, you can see that I do have some holy overloads. Um, you will want to bring aggression potions for this method, and then just bring um, some super restores. Of course, the Feather of Mots. I have a Softenum Slayer dungeon teleport to get there pretty fast, and then some food and my enhanced Excalibur. So the Corrupted Scorpions are located in the first room of the Softenum Slayer dungeon. Um, you might have to hop a few worlds just to get an open one, um, but once you do find one, you can start killing the Corrupted Scorpions by using an Aggression Potion. Also, if you do have your Vampirism Aura all recharged, you can use that as well. It is also a substitute for Soul Split, so if you don't have Soul Split, you can use this instead. Um, if you don't use Soul Split, however, I would recommend using Protect from Melee, um, and that will work just as well as Soul Split. Um, especially if you have the vampirism aura now another thing to note for this method is you're going to want to make sure that you do have your aoe abilities on your action bar and having revolution plus active this makes this method extra afk for you so if you guys can see on my action bar i have meteor strike hurricane quake and cleave those are all four of those are aoe abilities so having those at the front of my action bar I'll get to use them more often and I'll be able to kill more Corrupted Scorpions. You will be making most of your money off of the Keys to the Crossing. They are a 1 in 400 drop chance if you are off task. However, if you are on task, they're a 1 in 75, so your GP per hour will increase significantly if you do have a Corrupted Creature task. Now moving on to my next method, it is making Sacred Oil. So this is actually a really unique method. The only requirement being Shades of Mortom, which is a pretty early quest. You can actually do this um, really early into your account's life. Um, so it is a pretty low to mid-level money getting method. And you can make 6 mil per hour. And you're AFK for 2 to 3 minutes at a time. Now recommended, just to make this a little bit faster, is having a high combat level. And if you do have at least one Barrow's kill, that will help a lot as well. Since it will give you a quick teleport to the area using the Barrow's Teleport at the PVM Hub. If you don't have this, however, you will want to complete the In Aid of Meyer quest. Also, a Beast of Burden is helpful for this method as well. So to start this method, you will want to go to Morton. Um, now you're gonna wanna buy um, some Swamp Paste, some Timber Beams, and some Limestone Bricks. I recommend buying 50 Swamp Paste, um, 10 Timber Beams, and 10 Limestone Bricks just starting off. You'll also want to fill your inventory and your Beast of Burden with the Olive Oil Dose 3s. You can buy this from the general store here. And I recommend buying them from the general store rather than going to the Grand Exchange. That is just because if you do it via the Grand Exchange, um, they don't usually sell or you, you usually have to buy them overpriced. Um, so it is much cheaper just buying them from this shop. Now another thing that I really do need to note is that you should go to world 44 to do this method, otherwise you probably won't find any others doing it. 
Now, sometimes when you are on world 44, you'll notice that the temple still is broken. You can repair it, however, just by clicking on it. And if you do have the swamp paste, the timber beams, and the limestone bricks in your inventory, you'll use those on the temple. And if you look up in the top part of the screen, you'll see that my resources number increases. So basically, whenever I use some of these resources in my inventory, it will increase that number. And you need that to be at least above one for you to turn the olive oil into sacred oil. Now you will also be gaining sanctity as well by repairing the temple and by killing the shades, which is why a high combat level is recommended. Once you do have 100 sanctity, you can convert the olive oil into the sacred oil by using it on the flame in the middle of the temple. You can only get the flame to ignite if you do have the temple fully repaired, so that is why you're going to want to do that part at the beginning and why you're going to want to be on World 88, because it is a lot easier to repair this temple with others around you. So once the temple is up, you will want to just continue gaining sanctity either through killing these shades or you can repair the temple. And once your resource number is up pretty high, you don't need to purchase these materials again. So you won't need the swamp paste, timber beams, and limestone bricks. You can simply just repair it and you'll slowly gain sanctity as well as crafting experience. Once you get enough sanctity again, you'll want to convert the olive oil into the sacred oil. Now you can bank going to the PVM hub and then by teleporting back using the Barrows teleport. <laughs> However, another method of banking if you don't have this Barrow's Kill is by going to the Berderot Bank, which you will unlock if you have the Innate of my quest completed. Now, moving on to our next method, we have Killing Abyssal Demons. So, the only requirement for this method is 85 Slayer. However, there are quite a few recommendations to optimize this method. First off, 80 plus melee or magic is highly recommended. Um, you'll want curses and overloads. Now, if you are using magic, which is the best combat style to use here, um, Greater Chain is an especially useful ability here. You'll be able to get up to 1500 kills per hour if you do have this ability. Also, the Inquisitor Staff works as well if you do want to boost your damage a little bit more. And the Scavenging Perk is an excellent perk to use as well since you will be getting a lot of kills per hour. And then also, if you do have the Death Note Relic, that will be pretty useful here just to increase your GP per hour because it will note all of the uh, ashes that are dropped by these um, Abyssal Demons. So you'll be able to pick those up and that will add a lot of profit per hour to this method. So the Death Note Relic is a really great relic to use here. Now you can make around 5 mil per hour doing this method and that is not counting the extra money you're going to be making from the components if you do have the scavenging perk. Um, and you will be able to be AFK for around 2 to 3 minutes at a time. It is a pretty safe combat method to do. So first off, when you get to the Slayer Tower, you'll want to pick up a Slayer Contract for Killing Abyssal Demons. This just adds a little bit of Slayer XP as well as some coins to your uh, profit or your time here. Um, you get to claim it for about 250,000 coins, so it is a nice thing to pick up. And you only need to kill 200 to claim the contract. Now, the best spot to kill the Abyssal Demons is at the top floor of the Slayer Tower. Um, hopefully there's no one here. If not, you will have to hop worlds. Um, but uh, first off, you're just going to use your aggression potion and your holy overload. Make sure that your action bar is set so you do have a lot of AoE abilities. So you will want corruption blast, you'll want chains and dragon breath. Um, if you do have that greater chains ability, as I mentioned, that's going to be the best ability to use here. So you'll want that to be active as often as possible. So doing this method, you can get up to 1,000 kills per hour. If you do have the Greater Chains ability, however, um, you can get much more than that. You can get up to 1,500, especially if you do have the Chroming perk along with that. Um, so this method does depend on a few things if you're looking to make extra profit. Um, but on average, you should make around 4 to 5 mil per hour um, without optimizing this method. And so next we have Screening Soil. This is one of the best AFK money making methods in my opinion. Um, you can be AFK for around one and a half minutes at a time and make up to five mil per hour doing it. 
recommended you will want the master archaeologist outfit this outfit does require the uh, guildmaster qualification as well as 99 archaeology um, so it is a pretty high level uh, thing to have but it will actually increase the speed when screening soil from 1.8 seconds per soil down to 1.2 so you're going to be screening a lot more per hour which will allow you to make the 5 mil gp per hour now also recommended is the upgraded soil box just so you can hold some extra soil also a water fiend binding contract is pretty helpful when doing this method and you do have the option to use sign of the porters however this will increase the costs a lot so um, it is your choice there, it will make the method a lot more AFK, but it will increase the costs by a lot. Now to start this method, you will want to be at the Archaeology Guild. Um, you're going to want to fill your Archaeology box. Now the best soil to do is the Ancient Soil or the Ancient Gravel right now. Um, that's just because it does cost the least to uh, purchase and you still do get some pretty good materials which are worth a decent amount of money. So to do this, you'll want to go to the screening station and you can just start screening your soil um, just like this. If you do have your sign of the porters active, this will be AFK for about two minutes at a time. Um, however, I recommend you don't do that. If you do have the premier artifact, it is a good time to use it while doing this just so you will bank 50% of the items you get straight to the bank using this artifact. Um, but if you don't have it, I would recommend just going to the material deposit box and just depositing it that way. It will save you a lot of money in Sign of the Porters and it will increase your profit a little bit just because the Sign of the Porters are quite expensive. So basically that is it for this method. You're just going to be collecting all of these materials and depositing them and then selling them later for some pretty good profit. And so next we have making the component crates. This is another archaeology related method. Um, required is 20 invention and level 5 archaeology. You'll make around 4 mil per hour and you're AFK for around 1 minute at a time, sometimes more, depending on the action. As for the recommendations, the master archaeologist outfit is recommended, however it isn't as important for this method as it was for screening the soil. The invention master cape is pretty helpful, this will allow you to get more of the classic components when you do disassemble the artifacts, and a high level matic will speed up this method a lot as well. Now the first thing you're going to want to do for this method is buy some Imperial Steel and some Third Age Iron on the Grand Exchange. It's some pretty cheap materials and you're going to be making quite a bit of profit once you do uh, disassemble the artifacts after restoring them with the materials. The second part to this method is actually excavating the artifacts. You're going to want to do this at the Karadat dig site. Um, you're specifically going to want to be getting the uh, Venator crossbows and the Venator daggers. Um, you can restore these with the Imperial Steel and the Third Age Iron that you did just buy. Um, so once you do restore these, the next step is going to be disassembling them. Um, you can see that you will get uh, historic components basically every time. And then you'll also have about an 18% chance to get the classic components. Now once you do disassemble a lot of these, you're going to want to do this for basically the entire hour. You can then go to the invention guild to make the component crates. So once you have enough historic components and the classic components, you can go into the inventor's workbench and just go to the uh, material crates section you can make the classic component crates or the historical component crates you'll see that it does require some extra materials like the padded parts or the protective components you can get these by disassembling for example a green dehyde body um, so you can, might need to do this if you don't have these leftover components but if you're someone who does run the scavenging perk often then you should have tons of these um, but anyway, just make a few of these uh, component crates and then you can sell them on the Grand Exchange for some pretty decent profit. Now moving on to the next method, we have killing Chaos Dwarves. There is only one requirement for this method, which is forgiveness of a Chaos Dwarf. Um, you can make around 4 mil per hour doing this method and you should be AFK for around a minute or two at a time. 
Recommended is 92 Prayer for Soul Split. Um, if you do use this, it is recommended to use the Bone Crusher and Demon Horn Necklace. So you'll have basically unlimited prayer. Also, 75 Magic and 70 Defense are recommended as well. Um, and then the Scavenging Perk, this is another really good spot to use this perk just so you'll get some free components. And of course, it will add a little bit of GP um, in terms of those components. As for the recommended setup, as you can see, I'm using the uh, Subjugation Armor along with my Noxious Scythe. I am using Virtus Legs, that is because it does have scavenging on it, so you really do want this. Um, and then you can switch out the Blood Fury Necklace for the uh, uh, Demon Horn Necklace if you want that unlimited prayer, um, but the Blood Fury Necklace does work as well. So moving on to the method, you'll want to get there by going to Keldegrim. You can get there quickly by using your Luck of the Dwarves. Just follow this path into the little tunnel here, and this is where you are going to find the Chaos Dwarves. Now, Chaos Dwarves, they are aggressive, so you don't actually need aggression potions. Um, but uh, make sure that you are using Corruption Blast as often as possible, as well as Chains and Dragon Breath, since these are AoE abilities. Um, the main thing with this, you're going to want to look for the hand cannons. They aren't really that rare of a drop, so you should get quite a few of them. They sell for around 700k. So that's where you're going to be making a lot of your money. You also have a chance at the dragon pickaxe, so you could get that. Um, that's going to be worth a good chunk of change if you do get one. However, they are pretty rare. I believe it's 1 in 5,000, so you won't get them that often. Um, but other than that, you're just going to be making some money off of uh, money keys, um, but that is basically it. So most of the money coming off of the hand cannons, and then some money coming from the dragon pickaxe. As you can see, this method is really simple, especially since the chaos dwarves are automatically uh, aggressive. You can attack them also just to speed things up if you do want to uh, increase your kills per hour. And moving on to our next method, we have Killing Muspas. The only requirement for this is Fate of the Gods. However, Ancient Magics are highly recommended. 80 plus magic is also recommended along with Curses, especially Soul Split. You'll make around 4 mil per hour doing this method and you're AFK for about a minute or two at a time. Um, as for the recommended setup, I'm using Subjugation with my Noxious Staff. Um, you can use this setup here, it is pretty good. The Vampirism Aura also does work. Uh, you're going to want to make sure to bring the Spring Cleaner and use Ancient Magics. Since you do have your Ancient Magic Spellbook, you're going to want to bring some Magic Note Paper just for those drag and drops. Also, while you are doing this method, make sure that you are picking up all of the Elder Charms. These are really helpful later on when you're making um, the Nihil Pouches. You will need these, so make sure you are keeping them. Um, you can also make muspa pouches as if, if you do keep the muspa spines as well. So uh, they are really useful to have. So muspas are located within the world gate. That is why you need to complete the Fate of the Gods quest. Um, you'll want to go to the cradle and that's where the three muspas will spawn. They will be aggressive if you aren't wearing the Shard of Zero, so that's why you're not going to want to use it. You want them to be aggressive, it really does save you from having to use uh, an overload. And when you are using Ancient Magics, you are dealing 50% more damage, so you're going to be killing them pretty effectively. Um, if you have Soul Split, you will have no problem at all. Vampirism Aura is an alternative to Soul Split, um, but it really does make this method extremely AFK. You'll just need to check it. Um, to make sure that your prayer is still active and to pick up the drops. Now, as I mentioned, you're going to be making money off of the Alkables, so your Spring Cleaner is going to be making a lot of the money for you. However, Maspas also do drop a bunch of coin drops. They drop some dragon items like the dragon mace and offhand dragon mace. So there are going to be some items that you'll need to pick up and use the magic note paper on. Um, and they also do drop the Muspa Spines, so these can't be noted. Um, with Magic Note Paper, you'll need to either send them to the bank with a Pack Yak, or you can just uh, not pick them up. Um, personally, I don't usually pick them up, just because it does um, take a little bit more effort. But uh, it will boost your profit a little bit if you do want a little bit of extra GP per hour. And moving on to the next method, we have making Elder Rune Bars. The only requirement for this 
is 94 smithing. That's so you will get the chance at uh, making an extra bar. Um, so you can actually do it at level 90 smithing, but 94 gives you that 10% uh, extra chance at doubling the bar. And 91 prayer is for the superheat form prayer. You'll also need the light within. Smelting gauntlets are highly recommended for this, makes it a lot more AFK. The Orthon furnace, furnace Core is also pretty useful, as well as Grace of the Elves. And the Blacksmith's Helmet, this will actually provide a 1% chance to um, double your bar as well, so that will obviously increase your profit. You make about 4 mil per hour and you're AFK for about 1 minute at a time. Now the actual method is really simple, you're just going to want to make sure that you do have the light and dark Amnica in your ore bank as well as a rune bar. So you'll need these to make the elder rune bar um, and you, you'll notice that you won't, don't actually have a super high profit margin on them but since you do have that 10 or 11% chance at doubling the bar that's where a lot of the profit is going to be coming. So the profit does vary um, from time to time but on average you should make around 4 mil per hour doing this and as you can see it is extremely AFK so it is a really nice money maker to do while you're not really paying that much attention to the game. And moving on to our next method, we have Killing Rareri, which is one of the Ascension creatures. Only requirement is level 81 Slayer, however, you will really want to make sure that you are using ranged against them. So 80 plus range is highly recommended for this method. Also, Curses and Corruption Shot are really helpful um, for this method as well. Corruption Shot is mainly used um, just so you can kill them pretty AFK. Um, it is really helpful because it's sort of an AoE ability where it will hit all of them at once. Now you can make around 4 mil per hour from this and you'll be AFK for a minute or two at a time. So the Ascension creatures, they are located in the Ascension dungeon which is basically just north of the Uglog uh, lodestone. You can go into the monastery uh, entrance. Now here they are in the first room, you're going to want to make sure that you are using the aggression potions. Now, in order to make this method fairly AFK, you're going to want to make sure that a lot of your AoE abilities are at the front of your action bar, like Corruption Shot and then also Ricochet. These are your main two abilities. You'll also want to have Death Swiftness up there as well, um, just so you will use that as an ultimate ability. So these abilities are going to help a lot. Um, if you do have Bombardment, you're going to want to use that. Uh, periodically as well since it will hit uh, the Rarari if they are uh, in clusters. Now most of the money you're going to be making from this creature are from the Ascension Keys. They're actually worth a lot right now. Uh, they range from about 200k up to 800k so you're going to be making a lot of money off of those. The drop rate for these Ascension Keystones aren't even that bad. They have a drop rate of 1 in 384, but there are 6 of them. So basically that is a 1 in 64 chance. Um, and they are worth quite a bit of money. So you're going to be making a decent amount of money off of this. And as you can see, it is a bit AFK. Um, not as AFK as some other combat related methods, um, but it doesn't have too high requirements either. And moving on to one of our last methods, we have making teleport tabs. And the only requirement for this is 40 construction and of course the jack of spades if you're going to be making the Menaphos teleport tablets. Um, now the AFK time is one and a half minutes. However, you're only clicking for a few seconds every one and a half minutes. So this is extremely AFK. It's probably the most AFK method on this list. And you'll be making around 3 mil per hour. Now this method is extremely simple. You will be making these teleport tablets with the use of the lectern in your player owned house. So you will need soft clay and the law runes to make them. So the Menaphos um, teleport tablets for the Soften M Slayer dungeon. Um, they do sell for around 4,800 and as you can see it takes two law runes. The law runes cost about 400 GP each and then one soft clay for about 900 GP. So you're making them for approximately 1.7K. So basically 3K profit per teleport tab. Um, you can make 26 of them at a time and 
it takes about 90 seconds to do this. Now when you do run out of soft clay, if you do have a butler in your player own house, you can get him to fetch the soft clay for you. That way you don't have to go bank and then teleport back to your player own house. So this method is really AFK, that is basically all you have to do for it. And you'll make around 3 mil per hour doing this. And so those are the 10 AFK money making methods that I wanted to show you guys. I really hope you guys did enjoy this video and if you did let me know in the comments down below make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Also I am really curious to see what kind of video ideas you guys would like to see in the future so comment your best video idea for me in the comments and I will try to make it happen. Anyway guys thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.